People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. Autophagy response could be modulated in favor to restore the cell function and reduce the pro-inflammatory or the inflammatory status under pathological conditions. In other words, autophagy actually decreases inflammation, cardiovascular inflammation. And you know what? We see that time and time you know, people come in, if they haven't already started on their weight loss journey, that's the most common thing that we see in terms of driving this process, other than the number one item, which is age. So age is the number one driver of this. But the obesity epidemic may be a strong number two. Genetics are important. If I've seen it once, I've seen it hundreds of times. People come in to see me and they've already started a weight loss journey. But here's what happened. One of the things we do in the very beginning is we measure cardiovascular inflammation. If you're not familiar with that, we've done several series on cardiovascular inflammation panel. There's different labs that we use to measure that. HSCRP, high sensitivity C-reactive protein made by the liver. It's the most common biological false positive of the panel. Myeloperoxidase, MPO, that is one of the actual actors in this play. Myeloperoxidase is in the lysosomes of polymorphonuclear sites, one of the immune cells, and it's being released as a part of this inflammatory process. There's another enzyme that we look at too, LPPLA2, plaque 2. That is part of the lysosomes of the macrocytes. And again, being released as a part of the process that we've just been discussing over the past few slides. You get this process going on of your immune cells, the macrocytes and the, uh, the polymorphs, two different groups of immune cells, finding too much plaque in the external cardiovascular tree, getting excited, getting induced, their lysosomes release MPO and LPPLA2. We actually can measure the MPO myeloperoxidase and the LPPLA2. They help us understand what level of inflammation you have going on, specific to cardiovascular inflammation. There's one other test that we look at on the cardiovascular inflammation pro profile, and it may be in many ways one of the most functional because it's called MACR, microalbumin creatinine ratio. Now that comes from basically we're looking at microproteinuria, protein in the urine in very microscopic amounts. Why is that important? Because it's the lining of the artery that suffers the most during cardiovascular inflammation. The lining of the artery is also the filter membrane of each of the million filters in each of our two kidneys. If that membrane is undergoing inflammation, you're likely to be spilling minor amounts of protein through your kidney. We can pick that up. We can understand that, detect that, measure that, and get a good measurement of cardiovascular inflammation. So again, trying to take a few minutes, pardon me if there's a few bunny holes, but what I'm trying to do is connect the dots. If you go back a couple of slides where we're talking about lysosomes, well, you know, the lysosomes are releasing MPO and LPPLA2. And you talk about reverse cholesterol transport. Again, we see it all day, every day, where people are losing weight for one reason or another. The most common mechanisms that I have for people coming in that have already lost 30, 40, 150 pounds. Number one, they say, well, first I dropped my carbs and then my hunger sort of just really decreased. And some people start with intermittent fasting, added IF. Again, IF, as we discussed and discovered a few weeks ago, is really in some ways a way of decreasing carbs as well, because your body, after about a day and a half, you're starting to live on not carbs anymore. So you're starting to develop the mechanism to become fat adapted. Once you become fat adapted, whether it's from IF, intermittent fasting, or prolonged fasting, or decreasing your carbs, then this roller coaster of high blood sugar followed by insulin release, then your blood sugar drops, and then you get hungry again. All of that roller coaster stuff starts going away. You lose this hunger drive, and then you start eating a much more appropriate level of food.